Hello everybody, welcome to Video Game Logs with your host, Whisper100, and with me here is... I'm Dow Phoenix. And we're just gonna talk and ramble on about Fallout 4 and uh, what we thought of it, so... So, uh... That's now, a great start. That's a great introduction. Yeah, I know. I know. It's kind of <laughs> like a big bang, like uh, with the nuclear fallout. But, uh, yeah, yeah, so... So I've beaten the game. Down Phoenix here uh, hasn't. You've only played, what, like 40 hours of it? Yeah, I think I've got a little more than two days worth of play time, according to the game logs. Yeah, I have uh, 139 hours off the game, mainly from uh, just not... Doing not doing the main story, but exploring the whole Commonwealth, because uh, yeah, like Fallout Fallout Four was just the big game too. So, were you excited about the game when it was being announced? No, I had no hype for this game whatsoever. I was like, "What the hell is Fallout Four? And where was the first three? <laughs> just kidding. I was ecstatic for this game. Everyone and, was. Yeah, exactly. I mean. It was kind of funny with the whole Bethesda announcement when they announced this game at E3. Everybody was like all surprised. It's like, well, obviously they were going to do a huge announcement like this if they were going to do an E3 press conference because they've never done that before. With uh, Fallout? Yeah. Well, don't you remember whenever they had their E3 press conference last year? Oh uh, yeah, I, I I didn't I didn't see it, so I kind of missed out. Oh, on Oh, you that. didn't see it? Yeah, I didn't really see it myself either. I kind of missed out on it a little bit, but yeah, which... they made a huge deal about it, obviously, because it was their first ever E3 press conference. I mean, they've been at E3, but obviously in the past. Oh, but they haven't it... like shown anything off. Well, I mean, they, well, I mean, they've been at E3, but they've never done an actual press conference, like you know how Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo. Uh, EA, like they have for some, some reason, like Ubisoft. They, like they have some presentation of a game that they're working on and such, right? Right, yeah, like an actual press conference where they feature off all the titles they're working on, you know, and they had an actual press conference, and a lot of it featured Fallout 4, which uh, had never been seen before. And, you know, it's kind of crazy that they waited so long to reveal it because a lot of game companies, it seems like they're so anxious to announce something like as soon as they have like a scratch or an on a idea piece of paper or something like that you know some <laughs> artist drew something on a piece of toilet paper like hey we've got this new game coming out it's total shit it was drawn with shit yeah but yeah well anyways yeah so fallout 4 uh i was actually i actually got it off green man gaming thanks to down phoenix uh for a really good for a reasonable price with the discounts going on. I wasn't actually intending to buy it. I just wanted to check out the discount feature, but I ended up getting it. And nice. I don't I don't regret it. It's um Ah, there's so much to do. Like I wouldn't say this is my favorite Fallout game, but it definitely is on the the list. Right. It's kind of really tough to say because it's still a real recent game in the grand scheme of things. It's only been out for, like, what, three months now? Something like that? Yeah, pretty much near the, like, end of the year. So the thing uh, I wanted to do for this video game logs is do the usual talk about what we liked about it, what what we didn't like about it, the changes and all the stuff, what we thought of it. So, so what did you think of uh, Fallout 4 from what you've played down, Phoenix? Well, that's a very good question. Fallout 4 is a very polarizing game with me. Oh, I mean, really? I absolutely love certain aspects of it, but at the same time, it seems like they've taken away some stuff that really made the original game special. Oh, okay, yeah. I was going to I was going to bring that up at some point, but yeah, go on. Yeah. And, and uh, we'll get to that in more in detail, obviously, but uh, yeah, as far as Fallout 4, you know, I still really enjoy it. I think it is um, definitely fits in line with the rest of the games in the series. You know, I don't see any kind of dissonance between or it being this an game outcast. versus the others. Like, kind of like Fallout Brotherhood of Steel on PS2, for instance. That one, we can kind of just Dismiss. slide off to the side, yeah. But uh, this definitely belongs with the rest of them, for sure. Yeah, it's, uh, well, for one thing, it's called Fallout 4. It better be alongside with uh, the main series. Exactly. Or, in, in some aspect. And, uh, yeah, me... I really enjoyed it. I mean, I didn't put in that on like 139 hours for nothing cuz I really enjoyed exploring the Fallout world every time we get introduced to it and doing all the random stuff it has mm -hmm. in it. So um 
So I wrote down a couple of notes on the game, and, you know, whether they be good or bad, we'll talk about that in detail. So, uh, for the changes in Fallout 4, which is basically stuff that already existed in previous games, but they did something different to it in Fallout 4, one of them I wrote is, uh, the graphics. How did you think the world of uh, Fallout 4 looks? It's really funny with the graphics, because I remember when they first showed off the game, and everybody's like, these graphics suck, and they're all showing us screenshots shown where Fallout 3 supposedly looked better and stuff like that. I thought the graphics were really good uh, for this game. Now, I played it on the PS4. I didn't play it on the PC, so I didn't get to see all the fancy little shaders, Bloom, things like that. Yeah, you know, all this uh, crazy stuff, you know, that you can do on a good gaming PC. But, um, I mean, I think the graphics favor pretty reasonably compared to most PS4 games. I mean, I'd say in the upper 75 percentile range. Um, but obviously, you know, I mean, if you look at some of the stuff in Fallout 3, it did seem like certain things were more detailed, but you have to kind of consider that that game looked really bland as far as the color palettes and things like that versus Fallout 4. It seemed like the world was a lot more alive. A lot more life to it. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're... So that's something I really appreciated. Now, that being said, I really was disappointed with the animations. Oh, really? Game. Yeah, I mean, they, they were improved versus previous games. But Yeah, Bethesda we're, we're going to do games... a lot of uh, comparison with the previous games, obviously. Right, but Bethesda, they really have a, a penchant for having, like, really stiff animations, you know, whenever, like, you have all these other games, like, I mean, The Witcher 3, for instance, we actually were talking about that earlier. Yes. That game has a lot better animation than Fallout 4, without a doubt. Like, you know, it just seemed like a lot more fluid. Unless you're playing the crappy console versions, obviously, but yeah. That would <laughs> be for topic. another message, or another time for Down Phoenix. So, uh, well, yeah, exactly. what, what was stiff about the animation? Because uh, I think I know what you're talking about, but I didn't quite notice it. Because I was, I was playing it on the PC, so uh, PC Master Race. Right. Yeah, I guess that kind of helps. Yeah, if you do have a higher frame rate, it probably is going to look a bit smoother. Uh, that w That is without a doubt, of course. Oh! Uh, what frame rate were you playing it on, by the way? Were you getting 60, typically, or what? I would say so, and uh, actually, it's a good thing you brought that up. Uh, I found something out about Fallout 4, is that, like, before I got my graphics card, this game actually played pretty decently on a GT 640. Mm -hmm. That's GT, not GTX 640. That's a really... That's not even really a gaming graphics card, but it, it ran actually quite well on my PC with an i5. Like, uh, I was surprised. The mm -hmm. Fallout 4 didn't actually require... Didn't take that much requirement to actually run. Of course, occasionally, if, like, things get hectic, it started dipping. But mm -hmm. once I got the graphics card uh, to be able to play it properly, it it was pretty good. It looked it looked um, really nice, and it ran really smoothly. Now, so I'm going to give my piece on the graphics. Uh... Like Down Phoenix said, unlike in Fallout 3 and New Vegas, because those two are the same. Yeah, there, there's a lot more life, and it's a lot more refined. I really like the style it's, it went for in Fallout 4, unlike in previous games, where it's just... The landscape was really unrefined. It was more of, like... It felt more like that was just the idea that they just didn't, like, make it to, you know, smooth out all the rough edges of it. And, uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot more color in 4, so it... So, yeah, there, there's more life to it than the bland, brown shit you see in the previous games. Although, mm -hmm. you know, that in itself is its own style, too, so... Right, and uh, without, it goes without saying, it kind of makes sense in this particular game world where there, the it scenario. does seem like a little more live because it takes place uh, at a further time span than the other games. You know, it's further into the future, so, you know, obviously the world's had a chance to kind of adjust Recover. to the new climate... Or maybe the fallout in that world isn't as intense as the other ones. Because I mean, in uh, Fallout Three and Megaton, you, you had a bit, uh, you had a nuclear bomb in the center of it that didn't detonate yet. Mm -hmm. Well, depending on uh, how you it play was leaking it. radiation and all that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think we can both agree. I think we both agree that the uh, Fallout Four looks really nice compared to the previous ones. And if they make another Fallout game, I would like to see them continue using the style. It's yeah. not. It's not like great. Like as great as say the Witcher, uh, Witcher Three, or like some other higher grade uh, game graphics. But like it has a style going for it. And you, you know those like um, 
say for instance like Paper Mario graphics, like can you get any better than what they've done? It's it's kind of like that with Fallout 4. Like I think this style it looks really good for it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can nitpick various little things here and there, but overall, I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, really, the only way you're gonna get better is obviously just more stacking, more resolution, more frames, all, and that, all that stuff. stuff. But it's like you know that 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 could be never ending. But if you have a style, a, a theme, then it's like you know, um, it would age well. Uh, you know, graphics that would age well. Hence going right. back to hence going back to the Paper Mario graphics, like like you could play like uh, years in the future, like in Fallout Four, and it would still look good. Yeah, exactly. I see exactly what you mean. I mean, just kind of a little off topic. Paper Mario does look a lot better than a lot of its N sixty four contemporaries because of the style. Just like you mentioned there, uh, it's kind of tough to say if that's going to be the same case here at Fallout Four. Probably as far not, as that, but I would say probably so because Fallout Three still looks pretty good today. Even though we did have some complaints about the graphics as far as the uh, the style of it, you know, it still is a good looking game up to today's standards. Yeah, and like it, like it's still will, like it's still presentable for eight years from now. Yeah, it's still presentable. So, um, so I think that's all. That would be it for the graphics. Uh, next one I wrote was the combat. So, what did you think about the combat in uh, Fallout Four compared to previous games? Well, I really like the uh, point that they took with uh, Fallout New Vegas, where they added the um, ADS or whatever it's called, you know, like the targeting kind of like Call of Duty where you shoot behind the gun. Oh, the... Um, uh. It's called ADS. Like, a, it, it's assisted something system, I don't know, but it's like where you look through the gun sight. Yeah, yeah, I know. As I, opposed I, I, to, like, crosshairs or whatever. Yeah, I, I, know, I, uh, I know what you mean. Uh, it was like... It was like behind the scope or something, right? Okay, um, what's going on. And it was you know, that was a good thing for them to introduce in New Vegas, but it always felt a bit off in that game. Or, like, in other words, really stiff. Yeah, in this game, it plays just like any shooter like that. It plays like a Call of Duty or Battlefield game does, as far as the controls, and so it makes it instantly recognizable with the controls. It just makes it really easy the combat for the shooting. Now, on the other hand, the melee combat, there hasn't been any improvements that I've noticed uh, versus the past games, and that's been kind of disappointing, but... Being that, yeah. like, you know, in the world of Fallout, it's kind of like, well, there's not exactly too much you can do with it, considering everyone in the game mostly use guns. Yeah, that's a good point. And, I mean, I guess it seemed like with melee, it's actually kind of degenerated versus the old games like in the old games like the original you know isometric games you know the classic games like i did a let's play it for example and i yes, called go check it out. Accident. but melee seemed like it was a lot more viable in those old games and that was part of the fact due to it being entirely turn-based you had like little hexes that you can move and, and you know were, you can make were... a viable melee build whereas it seems like it's a lot more difficult in the newer games or in like the three D action game where you took out the where they took out the turn base, so it's like uh, you actually had to have reflexes to do all that stuff. Not to say that there weren't some interesting things like you know the death claw gauntlet or the paralyzing palm; those were fun. Yeah, but, definitely, but, and they were pretty effective in certain cases, also. But more more than not, you're probably just going to use guns, and the only reason melee worked for you is because is because you're the player who can take all this damage, and mm -hmm. certain uh, like really uh, tough enemies like uh, death claws. Yeah, and that's another thing I noticed about the combat. Like, in Skyrim versus Oblivion, if you kind of, like, compare the two games, it seems like in Oblivion you're able to absorb damage like a sponge. Whereas Skyrim, at least in the early part of the game, you were able to die quite easily. And that's kind of, like, the same situation when you compare Fallout 3 to this. You know, it seemed like you were a lot more vulnerable in Fallout 4, and so the combat did seem a bit more intense because of that. And that was kind of cool. But, um, I mean, really, it's a matter of just how damage is and compared how, And to how you game. play the game. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed the combat in uh, Fallout 4. Like, it's just, like Daniel Phoenix says, it's much smoother. It plays like a Call of Duty game, or Call of Duty uh, mechanic, or any other shooter. And it's just, like, it's just so much fun to, like, you know, kick ass. Because yeah. in 3, in 3 in New Vegas... 
I had to I had to use the VAT system. Like if I ever went into combat without it, it was like mm, there was a good chance I'd be fucked up pretty bad in it. But in uh four, I felt like I had control over you know the outcome. Like if things weren't going good, I could just run away or like um uh, like you know I I could literally just go in guns a blazing and like mm-hmm. just to shoot everyone in the head or something like that. Uh, which, which going on to that note, uh, that's because the combat is so the because the combat is so much more fluid and uh, better than the previous games. That w- wasn't used as much. I find like I did still yeah. use it, but not like I didn't rely on, rely on it as much as the previous games. Not, not to mention there is a lot more immediacy with the VAT system than there was in the past games. Because when you used it before, it completely paused the games. And you had as much time as you wanted to decide what you want to do. Whereas in this game, it actually kind of goes into slow motion. Where you still have quite a bit of time to decide. But like, if you're deciding, hmm, should I go for a head shot or a leg shot? Or should I kind of like, like chain like, up shots? You had to actually do it in kind of a fairly fast response. You know, if you didn't want the enemy to like maul you or whatever. Yeah, basically you go into Matrix time where you're thinking like really fast. Like, should I hit him here, 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 or here? Mm-hmm. Well, which, well, which is kind of exec- nice. Yeah, once you execute it, works just like Fallout 3's does, though. Now, there is a new... Th- now, despite me saying... Despite what I just said about not using VATS that much, they did add a new thing with the VATS where you can build up a critical meter. And that yeah, was that pretty sweet. that was actually sweet. really nice. I always forgot to do that, though. The critical meter gives you an incentive to ha- play around with the VATS because... Uh, because the critical meter makes you do a shit ton of damage when you uh, use it, and it's pretty awesome. Because then, like, uh, just like doing like these final epic kills on an enemy using like uh, your shotgun or whatever, like, like they still matter to make the vats like relevant in the game. Right. Yeah. It, it's they knew that they took kind of took away from the usefulness of it, so they kind of added the whole critical system to kind of like give you some incentive to still utilize it. Which is good. That was actually, I was pretty amazed by, or impressed by that, because it was like, because uh, when I was like, oh, this combat's really easy. Oh, what? Critical meter? It's like, oh, that's pretty cool. Because it's also reliable, too. Like, a reliable critical hits, because you still have the random critical hits you can do, which I don't really notice in the game too much. Right. Actually, speaking of the whole VAT system, did you ever get the impression that whenever you do use it, that it seemed like the targeting percentages seemed to be a lot lower than the past games? Yeah. Yes, I do. Um, some like Sometimes I have to get right in their face to even get like an 80%, and it's just like, hmm. That, that's just kind of weird. I don't know if it's because they just want to focus on the more fluid combat that they... At the same time, sort of discourage the VATs. Right. Either well, that or thinking... either that or I didn't really put the points into into the VATs, which we'll talk about the perk system later. But Right. I think that also has to do with the way that skills worked mm-hmm. in this game versus in past games. I Def- don't know if you want to kinda touch on that now or if you want to touch on that. Oh, so uh perks. well are we are we done with uh, talking about combat? Like uh we liked certain aspects of it, but at the same time it also did something to the game as a whole as a fallout game yeah i mean it 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 plays very well i really enjoy the combat but it does play a bit differently than the past games and so maybe not everybody's going to be into that people that uh maybe really enjoyed the more turn-based nature of the classic games or the more methodical more methodical uh combat in the previous games exactly oh yeah yeah and uh yeah, just quick thing. Uh, I'm gonna bring this up quick. Even the Down Phoenix already talked about. It. Yeah, melee. I almost never. Ne- I pretty much never used it because it just. It just sucked. Yeah, I mean there were certain times that I would use it. Like some melee weapons were pretty effective against certain enemies. Like mm-hmm. I had like this electric, serrated Chinese sword or something like that, oh, which yeah. is actually like really good against the uh, synths. Mm, the Which Sith, I guess yes. we'll talk about them later, but uh, we'll talk about them in the it. in the story part of the game. Yeah, um, there are certain weapons like that that were pretty useful in various situations, especially if you were low on ammunition. But Which, over, but overall, uh, overall, yeah, the melee 
I would use it maybe about five to ten percent of the time I was in a combat scenario. Over the guns. Right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, next up I wrote is the perk system slash skill system, so we're going to talk about that. So, uh, what did you think of the changes they did to the perk system in this game over, uh, say, specifically 3 and f- three in New Vegas? And the original, of course. Uh, the perk system is really interesting, the way they've done it. Um, it seems like you had a lot of control over how you leveled your character. Um, was that in the previous games or in uh, 4? In, in 4, specifically. Okay. Like In the previous games, obviously, when you leveled up, you got a perk every 3 X, or 4 levels or X whatever. X number of levels. Right, and um, you just level up your skills when you spend points on skills. This game takes a lot more simplified approach to it, just kind of like Skyrim did, in a way. Like, if you compare Skyrim to Oblivion, you know, in Oblivion it had that classic... Oh, you spend your points on whatever, and you did these things, so these things level up a certain way, and so on. Um, whereas Skyrim did a completely different approach, and this game's kind of the same parallel between Fallout 3 to Fallout 4. Um, you know, Fallout 3 had kind of like the more traditional leveling system. That's whereas, like, uh, that's like, uh, it's still keeping in respects to the original games where you had skills and perks at a certain part, so well, a cer- at certain levels. Right, but this game does a lot more, it it does certain things a lot more simplified, you know, like you don't have the number crunching like it did in the past games, but you do still have a lot of customization on how you level your character, Um, so that's kind of nice. The only thing I don't really particularly like about the new system is that attributes are essentially kind of useless now, because you can level those up at any time, like you can, you know, just whenever at a whim level up your attributes. And, um, well, not at a whim, but every time you gain a level, you can spend your points towards attributes if you want. So, like, if you want a character that's a smooth talker, but you also wanted to be a shooter, and, you know, it didn't seem like you had to really make very many compromises. You, yeah, you didn't have to think about it, because, uh, oh, yes, because I, I found this out a little later, is that this game has no level cap, so your character can literally learn everything when he hits a certain point, which, uh... I meant I was talking with Down Phoenix about it. It kind of destroys any individual out, or any build you could do that were like it specialized in a certain thing, making them unique. And now your character can just do everything, which you know that's cool, but it kind of sucks at the same time because there's no theme to it. Yeah, I, I see why they did it. Obviously, because you know you looked at uh, Skyrim. Skyrim is kind of the same way, and another series that I like a lot, the Dark Souls series. It's technically the same way you know you can infinitely level up pretty much but um but yeah at the same time you know it i guess it 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 matters what kind of control you have you have to kind of have like self-control over yourself you know to not overindulge in the leveling to really enjoy the um you know a way you can build out unique characters you know if you're a person that's very obsessive about oh I want to get everything I possibly can then you could spend hours <laughs> hours more like years playing this game <laughs> that's true but you know in a reasonable time it would be like oh okay maybe not just hours but like days and weeks right but yeah uh, the perk system I Fallout 4 went for a lot of new things like they changed a lot of stuff like say with the combat too uh, and the perk system just, you know, I I liked I liked it like you know giving a new uh, spin on it. But I also like Down Phoenix said uh, I also didn't like it that much because um, well for one it made it feel less like a Fallout game. Like I did kind of like the fact that they got rid of the skills like you know repair, um, lock picking, and all that stuff because because. Uh, it w- it was really uh, annoying at certain points. Like for instance, like certain perks won't unlock unless you had like a skill at a certain point, and it's just like, oh, now I gotta level up some more in order to get that um, perk to unlock for me to use, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but in here, every time you level, you just get whatever perks you want. So it kind of like, well, there's... as long as you had the appropriate attributes, which yeah, that too, in... yeah. Yeah, so like uh let, like, like there, let's say if there's a perk at like uh that you can unlock at like the 6th level of strength but you only have like 4. Uh, yeah, you you just can't use that perk at all until you level up your attributes, which was the only reason you would ever level up your attributes is 
They're just there for you to use some more advanced skills, if they are that good. Which uh, right, most attributes. I mean, some did have very specific importance, like charisma, for example. Very nice to have ten on, just so that you can win over a lot of conversations. Ah, uh, that was a thing. I'm we're gonna have to go on yeah. about. That, yeah, that, that is that, something that. to talk about for sure because okay, the hope, conversation hope. systems change a lot. In other words, it kind of sucks. But uh, go, going back to the perks, um, did you use many of the perks in Fallout 4? Because uh, for me, after a while, when I had started leveling up and got all the perks I wanted, I didn't really have any perks I wanted to get afterwards. Because here's what I got. I got all the modding perks except for the melee, because we, we, as we mentioned, melee kind of sucks in this game. And I got the Rifleman and the Nuclear Physicist, which makes your fusion cores last twice as long. Mm-hmm. And the Rifleman makes you double do a uh, double damage with any um, non-automatic weapon. And once I did that, I was just pretty much set. I didn't really have any other perks that I wanted to get because, well, they weren't that impressive. Yeah, this game does seem to have a lot of self-sufficiency. Like it seemed like economy is a lot different from the other Fallout games, which is something we should touch on more a little bit later. Oh, what do you mean but, by economy? Uh, well, just like with trading and bartering and, you know, uh, utilizing stuff that you find in the world versus purchasing it or trading it with somebody. Oh, jeez, yeah. the money. Yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, I really enjoyed the perk system, but it, at the same time, it can it can be easy to overindulge and not really get a, a true sense of identity in the game. Personally, I kind of was playing a leadership-type role in the game, so obviously charisma was a big thing for me. Uh, leveling up like a local leader was very important because you have to have that, obviously, to really get the full advantage of the set settlements. Yeah, yeah, you you had to have local leader in order to make, like, say, the power armor stations, which I, it kind of pissed me off because I was like, I... Okay, because this is before I realized that, you know, you don't have a level cap because I was like, oh, I, I thought it would be like the previous games where your level cap would be like 30 or 50 Something like that, mm-hmm. right? So keep that mindset in in mind. So I thought I was wasting a perk just to get something, just like one item from that perk, from that perk, because I I found most of the other perks kind of useless and not really needed at all. Because like uh, like we said, the combat is really good, so you're just really self sufficient on that. You almost don't really need perks at at some po- at points in the game. I find. Right. Right. Exactly. And. Um... You know, another thing that was huge as far as the changes was the crafting and modding system. Which we'll get on to next, because that's uh, next on the list of changes. Yeah, I think we should go ahead and move on to that. I think we've set it up about perks, personally. I mean, what else can we really say about it? Okay, but final thoughts. Uh, Interesting spin on it. I still kind of like the original Mm -hmm. one for it, because that's what made Fallout uh, Fallout. But this one, like, you know, it's good to at least try some new ideas out to see, like, whether people are like them or not, but... Um, I definitely like the older one more than Fallout 4 because I made use of those perks a lot more than yeah. than in uh, 4. I think personally, if they made a Fallout 5, they should consider a hybrid of things. Like I think the uh, cutting out of the number crunching was a very nice uh, thing to do for them. Just like because it was between... kind of like a break. Like like yeah, I know after going through all that, it's like oh, kind of a break to simplify right. things. It allowed you to focus on the adventure and not have to worry about managing numbers. But on the other hand, it seemed like the game didn't really give you any kind of sense of I, character building. Like it yeah, it, like it kind of lost. Just, it kind of lost its identity. Yeah, it seemed like you can kind of frivolously pick perks out just to pick them out because they sound like oh, that sounds like something I want to have, and not really have like a sense of building a specific character. Nope, it's just a. It's how you grow. It's how you grow your character, and then in the end, they're all going to be the same. 